Hi everyone, welcome to the show. Today is Thursday, December 19th, and Mark has 199 days left to go in his U.S. prison sentence, and this is the last Christmas that we're going to be apart because of his incarceration, and it's really difficult in many ways to get through the holiday season, but it's really exciting to know that it is our last one apart, and just yesterday I got his Christmas card every year. He sends me cards, many of them, and this is the Christmas card he sent. It's another little pop-up with a Christmas tree, and it says, Merry Christmas, Jody. Next year, I'm home with you. Your lover, Boo, Mark. And here we have a photo. This is actually from 2005, the first Christmas that we spent together. He's laying on my lap, and I'm holding my cat, Max, and my mom's old cat is behind us there. And this photo is us together on the last Christmas we had together uh, in 2009. And I'm wearing a hemp hood lamb jacket there, by the way. <laughs> and that's up at Sun Peaks in my hometown, Kamloops, where I'll be going for a couple nights this year to be with some of my family. And I hope everyone out there uh, can get together with their family. And I really send my support to everyone who's going through a separation because of incarceration. I know there are a lot of activists, a lot of patients, and a lot of regular people who are being torn apart by the drug war and by many other unjust policies of the government and it's a heartbreaking thing to know that there's a lot of children out there missing their parents during this time of year when it's supposed to be about getting together with loved ones so that's just a reminder of what we're in this for we're in it to remember that families should be able to stay together and that's what we're fighting for to end the drug war to end the suffering that happens to so many people so christmas kind of sucks i gotta be honest and it's been a little rough but we're making the most of it here we've got lots of fun at cannabis culture at our big christmas party and we've got a lot of friends and supporters all over so i'm very grateful for all of that and it's very exciting to see all the news ahead with legalization and stores opening to sell pot in the united states and in uruguay and we've got a lot more coming up. I think it's going to be one of the most crazy years ahead. Uh, the year of the horse it's going to be, so I don't know what that means, but sounds like a galloping good time. <laughs> so we'll have a lot going on, and when Mark comes home, uh, rest assured, we'll be out there fighting for everybody. And I also wanted to let you guys all know that I'm still doing Global BC One. This is the network here in British Columbia where we talk about different news stories of the day. But I was also recently back on Sun News Network because the Conservative Government of Canada, if you can believe this, wants to propose the idea of issuing tickets for fines for pot possession instead of... or in addition to the ability of police to lay charges. So they're saying that it wouldn't be necessary for charges, a ticket could be given instead for a fine. Now, if you are following the news at all in Canada with cannabis, you know that these uh, conservatives are not to be trusted in any way whatsoever. We've got mandatory minimums in place and every day right now across Canada people are suffering from that already and it's only just beginning and we also have the loss of gardens with Health Canada's changes to the medical marijuana laws here. So there's going to be a lot of suffering on the cannabis community front in the year ahead. So despite my optimism and excitement, which is still fair and valid to have, there are a lot of things to be very concerned about. And the loss of gardens and the mandatory minimums and the massive increase in punishment and imprisonment for pot, we're going to see that. We're going to see it for years to come because there are even instances now where people who were busted for marijuana in some form or another could get house arrest or any sort of other lesser sentence, but those sort of sentences are being removed as a possibility requiring people to stay in prison. So there's all sorts of little evil ways like death by a thousand paper cuts by this government in the way that they're eroding at personal liberty and justice. Tough fight ahead, but the conservatives are offering this idea of having pot tickets, fines for pot possession, and you know what? If you can go away without a criminal record and just pay a fine instead, that's less punishment, so that's better, and I'll take it, but that's not the end goal, of course. We're always going to be pushing and campaigning for no punishment, no penalty for pot at all. That's the end goal, but we can't get there one big jump. You know, slavery didn't end overnight either, and equality for women still isn't fully realized in many ways. So, you know, the battles we have for liberty and freedom are always ongoing. And if we can get any little victory, any little bit of liberty, any little bit of extra reduction in punishment, take it and keep fighting for more. So, bravo to the conservatives if they're listening to public opinion and experts about this, and that's why they want to propose it. 
then that's good. But again, I'm not sure I trust them, and there are a lot of reasons why they might be proposing this just to deflect attention from the very negative, harmful effects of the laws they've already passed. So we'll see what happens. But it's going to be exciting, like I said, and I was happy to be back on Sun News talking to the Conservatives about that, and I'm excited to talk more about it to Conservatives and everybody out there because we can win allies from all over. It's not necessarily about lefties or righties. We've got people all over who agree with our ideas and we should take any opportunity we can to educate them. So I'm going to wrap it up there. I don't have too much else to say. I'm not going to be doing a show next week because I'll be home with my family. But when I come back, it'll be 2014, I believe. And on that day, we can say this is the year that Mark comes home. And that is going to be so awesome. I'm so excited. Thank you so much to everybody out there for your support. Oh, and a huge thank you to everyone in Lethbridge who turned out for the fourth and final Free Mark Henry fundraiser. You guys got together with music and speakers. We had uh, Keith Fagan and Debbie. We had Lisa Kirkman, Mama Kind. Uh, we had Fiona who organized it. And we also had Dana and Austin and a lot of different people out there in Alberta who have been behind us this whole time. They came together on this last weekend while I was visiting Mark and they had the final Free Mark Henry fundraiser to help pay for Mark to keep safe in prison and we can't thank you guys enough that's one of the best commitments we've seen from anybody and it really means a lot and uh, we can't wait to be back in Alberta with everybody celebrating in person for the freed Mark Emery party <laughs> and we'll see you guys there all across Canada and everywhere else we can go when Mark's home so thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you guys next year have a great Christmas and New Year's and all the rest take care free Mark Emery free all the drug war prisoners.